Rim World is a tough place to get ahead. You know, with raiders attacking your settlements all the time. So if you want to make a name for yourself on this planet, and you can't beat them, join them. Which is exactly what we did, becoming a raider clan ourselves. But we're not bad guys. Okay, maybe we are slightly evil. However, it is rewarding because at the end of your workday, you come home to a peaceful, unbothered lifestyle. That is, until these assholes from the Empire show up demanding tribute payments of our hard stolen gold. So today, we're going to raid the Empire and take back what we originally stole. Let's take a step back for a second and think through our plan. So ultimately, we want the Empire gone, but we can't just beat them in a fair fight. Have you seen the gear their soldiers have? Have you seen the gear our soldiers have? No, we would get smoked. So what's the solution then? It's running away. Well, more like moving away. In the southern part of the world exists a peninsula, with the nearest Imperial base being pretty far away. If we can make it there, the clan will have completely free reign to raid the nearby settlements without having to pay royal tributes. There is one problem, however. To get there, we're gonna need a lot of chem fuel for our vehicles. Now, the easiest way to produce chem fuel is with wood, and I don't see a lot of wood around us. So we're gonna need to trade some of our ill-gotten gains for that liquid gold. And that's where the Empire comes into play. You see, they're loaded. One successful heist on them will set us up with enough wealth to buy our way to freedom. But our clan has never successfully raided a group of their power level. It would probably be a good idea to get some practice in by raiding our neighbors. Oh, I haven't introduced you to our raiders yet. Meet Squinks, Pew Pew, Teen Wolf, Wobbles, the raider formerly known as Prince, Dan, and last but not least, our leader, Chief Katza Krankenwagen. Our raiders board up in their vehicles and set off towards the local friendly neighborhood tribal base. Oh my, that's a lot of tribals. I count one, two, three, at least three tribals. This might be a bit of an issue. Ah, fuck it. Ah, we succeeded in the raid, but that was more of a slaughter than a tactical heist. But at the end of the day, their treasures belong to us. Upon returning to the base, we parked our vehicles in the garage and unloaded the corpses of our fallen foes. We prepared their bodies and served a cannibal feast for our tribe. The best thing about raids is we eat very well afterwards. And then I noticed what looked like a massacre at the border of our base. <laughs> I guess while we were gone, a trade caravan of the tribals we raided stopped by and got killed by our turrets. Looks like we're gonna be eating good for a while, boyos. Uh, and then a raid occurred, giving us more bodies to feed ourselves with. Okay, okay, AI, just give us a little bit of a break. Our freezer is already full of bodies. You know, all this death has got me thinking. I don't really want to go down in history as just a cannibal warlord. I want to be known for some good things, too. So ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce the raiding clan's first wind turbine. We're shifting some of our energy needs away from the current mass polluting system and building a single turbine to go green and save our planet. Though we're not gonna get rid of the old toxifier generators. That'd be ridiculous. One of the best things about the slaughtered caravan, besides, well, the human meat, is they drop some FSX. What is FSX? It is the primary ingredient to make explosives. But to make this stuff, we need a lot of chem fuel, which as I mentioned, is a valuable resource given the whole no trees anywhere nearby thing. Explosives are going to be important moving forward, and as our tests show, it can be a quick way to enter enemy structures. And given how three of our clan members were injured in the last raid, employing better tactics is probably a smart idea. We sent Pew Pew and Teen Wolf to scout out the next base. From what we can see, they have several auto turrets protecting their base, but this big building looks pretty juicy. Our current plan is for Teen Wolf's buggy to draw the guards away from the compound while the rest of the party pulls up and sets off the explosives to raid the base. If we can achieve this, we might stand a chance in our heist on the Empire. We need to get going though before their mortar kills our scouts. The clan preps some C4 and gets in their vehicles to set out on the raid. Slight hiccup though. The layout of the base has changed. 
Okay, same general plan, but we're gonna wing it. Team Wolf begins his run to pull the guards away. And that cannot be good. Oh no, Teen Wolf! <laughs> this, is, this is so stupid. After his death, we're gonna retreat and rethink our plan. Well, kind of rethink it. Instead of using a distraction buggy, we're going to use a tank that we can name. So Philip the tank can not only take damage, but he can also dish it out. Which is good, because Wobbles will be manning it, and hopefully he doesn't die. Wobbles begins to shell the town, thus drawing out the guards. As he is doing that, the rest of our raiding party gets into position, and Wobbles died. Inside of the tank. How? But on the bright side, the villagers are still attacking the tank. Two of our remaining raiders engage a straggler, while the others set up the C4 to breach the buildings. Once they get to a safe distance, we detonate the charges. And there isn't much. But don't worry, we still have three more charges. There's only a backpack. All right, this is our last charge. Kronkenwagen, this is no time for a siesta. At least get to a safe distance, man. <sighs> so that was a bust. All we got was a backpack, a tactical rig, and, well, another backpack. The total value of these three items is $450, and the market rate of chem fuel is $275 a unit, so we can purchase roughly 163 units of chem fuel. It's not that great. But we still have the Empire Heist, and Kronkenwagen's ego won't let us fail. Speaking of egos, after our last disappointing raid, Chief Katza Kronkenwagen's ego as a cannibal warlord was hurt. So fuck that turbine. We're going back to polluting our planet by building more Toxifier generators. Now that everyone has seen whoever is the distraction in our heist will most likely die, who are we gonna trick into doing it? Well, would you look at that? Hey, buddy, we're gonna rescue you, but you owe us one favor, okay? Great. Once we built another tank, this time named Leonardo, we outfitted our new recruit, Dealey, with some armor we had lying around. And hopefully, it'll keep her alive slightly longer. After the rest of the raiders geared up for the big heist, we set out on our mission. We launched the same attack as last time, with the tank engaging the enemies, then leading them away, while the real squad pulls up and tries to take out the auto turrets. But the raider formerly known as Prince got down by one. Then Pew Pew got stabbed by an Imperial straggler. Kragenwagen then picks a fight with an ostrich. And this entire time, our sharpshooters couldn't hit the turrets, so we can't push up to the base. I think we're just gonna have to pack up and leave. Uh. That was a disaster so bad that we stole nothing. The clan is now in a pretty tough situation as we are now the enemy of the Empire and our entire plan has failed. So Chief Krankenwagen asked the remaining two members to meet him in his house to discuss a new plan. As the two entered, they asked themselves, where is Chief Krankenwagen? But more importantly, they should be asking, why is there C4 everywhere? Remember when I said using wood is the main way to make chem fuel? Well, you can also use organic material, such as human meat. With a new source of chem fuel obtained, and Chief Katze Krankenwagen, the last member of his clan, he set out to rebuild in the south, free from the rule of the empire. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or are a really cool person, you should check out my last video 